So far we've looked at osteoporosis, osteoblasts, and osteoclasts using the analogy of a construction site. What hasn't been explained is how exactly the workers and tools function. What is the process behind bone remodeling, and what role does each element play? In this video, we will examine calcium, which is the primary material in bones, to see how its levels are regulated within the body. So calcium is our material. Its levels are regulated metabolically with the feedback loop involving hormones. So by metabolism, we are simply referring to chemical reactions and processes that occur within our body. And hormones are messengers that stimulate specific responses from different areas in the body through feedback mechanisms, which are simply just cause and effect circuits that feed back into themselves. Let's continue to break this down. Why do we need calcium in the blood anyways? Well, calcium is necessary for muscle and nerve function, as well as blood clotting. This physiology can get complicated, so we won't go into more detail, but it is important to know that calcium is a necessary element of blood plasma. Let's now examine calcium metabolism, and more specifically, the feedback loop that keeps calcium levels within the blood constant. The body works constantly to maintain stable, balanced conditions. This is known as homeostasis. There are two glands that work to maintain blood calcium homeostasis, the thyroid and the parathyroid gland. Both of these glands make and release hormones that work to maintain this balance. When the body has low blood calcium levels, the parathyroid gland reacts by secreting parathyroid hormone, also known as PTH. PTH increases blood calcium levels by activating osteoclasts, which, if we recall, are responsible for breaking down the bone to release calcium from the bone into the bloodstream. PTH also activates vitamin D, and vitamin D increases the amount of calcium that is absorbed through the kidneys and through the small intestine. So as you can see, Parathyroid hormone, or PTH, acts to increase calcium levels in the blood. Now you may be thinking, what? I thought vitamin D was a tool used to help build bone. And this is correct. Vitamin D is an essential tool for bone building. And if we recall, bone building involves taking calcium from the bloodstream and using it as the primary material to build bones thereby decreasing blood calcium levels. But now we also see that another role of vitamin D is to increase kidney and intestine calcium absorption. And what that means is that more calcium is going to be absorbed from the kidneys and from the intestines instead of being flushed out of the body through the urine or stool, thereby increasing blood calcium levels. So we can see vitamin D serves two completely different functions, one that acts to decrease blood calcium levels and the other that increases blood calcium levels. So let's now examine the other side of blood calcium homeostasis. What happens when calcium levels in the blood are too high? When there are high levels of calcium in the bloodstream, the thyroid gland produces calcitonin. Calcitonin is a hormone that increases bone building, meaning that more calcium goes from the bloodstream into the bones. And how does calcitonin do this? Well, you can think of calcitonin as a police officer who is stopping the vandals from taking apart the building. Thus, calcitonin stops the osteoclasts from doing their job. Calcitonin also inhibits the reabsorption of calcium within the kidneys. This means that more calcium is flushed out of the body through urine, thus lowering calcium levels within the bloodstream. So basically, when blood calcium levels are high, calcitonin is secreted, which signals for osteoclasts to be inhibited and for the reabsorption of calcium in the kidneys to be inhibited. Thus, blood calcium is decreased. 
So let's review blood calcium homeostasis. When calcium levels in the bloodstream are too low, the parathyroid gland releases parathyroid hormone, or PTH. PTH acts to activate osteoclasts, as well as activates vitamin D, which, if we recall, works to increase the amount of calcium that is absorbed into the bloodstream through the kidneys and through the intestines. Thus, calcium levels within the bloodstream rise. And when calcium levels within the bloodstream are too high, the thyroid gland produces calcitonin. And calcitonin acts to inhibit osteoclast activity as well as inhibit the reabsorption of calcium through the kidney. Thus, calcium levels within the bloodstream will fall. And here's a summary of how these two systems maintain blood calcium homeostasis. And lastly, let's review the different roles of vitamin D. So vitamin D is an essential tool for building bones. And when it is used to help build bones, this decreases blood calcium levels. But vitamin D is also important in increasing kidney and intestine calcium absorption. And when it serves this function, it acts to increase blood calcium levels. I hope this video has helped you to better understand how calcium's levels are regulated metabolically through a feedback loop involving calcitonin and the parathyroid hormone. And remember the purpose of this feedback loop is to ensure that calcium levels within the bloodstream remain constant. So no matter if we're trying to increase calcium levels or decrease calcium levels, the purpose is to reach this homeostatic balance. Thank you so much for joining us today. Take care everyone.